Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. And here we are now with part two. And this is the Apache E, uh, Guard, Apache Guardian. Um, and this is from Tacom. I've put part one up. Uh, I haven't put it out yet. I'm going to get a few videos done before I actually put anything out on this one because we've got the Spitfire to finish, the, the, the Airfix Spitfire. We've also got the Lancaster to do some more work on. So I think I'll do some work on those. I've also had this Qatari Spitfire turn up. So um, we need to get that one as done as well. So uh, this will probably come after them. Anyway, um, Going along nicely, if you want to see this being worked on, this is the kit I'm working on when I do the Saturday night live streams over on Plastic Monkey's channel. So you'll see me working on it there. I'll generally just do some simple building and stuff like today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday. Obviously, I'll probably just build some weapons or something or build up stuff that's in two halves. I won't be doing anything technical on there because, you know, you've got people asking questions and stuff like that. And plus, you know, you can't really talk about what you're doing while you're on there so and it's and it's not recordable um so when i left you last time i painted the inside of here we dry brushed all the mechanism we built all the mechanism up um and we put some oil oils on there uh, i have now gone over and painted a lot of the interior we've got a lot of the small interior parts here basically everything's been painted in black and then i've gone over a lot of it in um uh, LP65 rubber black so you can see it's well I don't know if you can see but it's, it's not dead black and then I've gone in and picked up these little details here in black I've gone over the rear padding here what I did I put a satin varnish varnish on there and then I gave it an oil wash and then rubbed the oil off so the oil so it sort of accentuates the padding and it looks a little bit of a shine on it and then I've painted this ducting in here and the pipe work in black um, I just basically I've done the seats I painted the seats gray and then gave them a very very light brush with very light gray and then a, a wash with um with oil and and you can see how they look and when they get put into their actual seat bases you can see they take on a much lighter appearance within the black seat but obviously we'll be doing some um, dry brushing and stuff these these trims around the edges of the seats appear to be a lighter color than the rest so it's going to be a case of you know, different NATO black, rubber black, maybe some different manufacturers, black, Yeho brush on black. The, the whole thing inside is just bloody black. So it's going to be very, very difficult to make it look interesting. As you know, we've got the um, the Red Fox Studio set for it. That's all in here. A lot of it's come off. I've removed all the um, panels that are because you have the choice of having the dash powered up or powered down. And I want it powered down. And you can see here we've got the powered up instruments in there so they're um they're bagged up separately we could maybe use them in something else one day or something who knows um so there we go so uh, all in all oh, i've done the the rudder pedals i just gave them a very light dry brushing with some aluminium just so that if we can see them it makes them a bit more noticeable and again the quilting on that side panel there it's been done with a, so a glass a satin uh, satin varnish and then washed over the wheel and then rubbed with a cotton bud so it kind of gives it that sort of nylon -y, I think it's like a nylon material, um, you know, much like a sort of um, like a tent material, I think. So there we are. So and that's what I'm going to have to do with the inside is just use different sheens, different blacks, different dry brushing, maybe a bit of chipping, whatever. So I'm sort of ready now to start looking at getting these this um, this set glued on here. There's lots and lots of it. There's lots of tiny little parts, as you can see. We've got tiny little bits here going on the cyclic and the um, and the joysticks there, and uh, yeah, very very. It's going to be very very nice indeed. But as I say, it's just all black, so it's going to be very difficult to make it look even slightly interesting. Um, so there we are. Moving on here, um, if you remember at the end of part one, I mentioned to you about this fuselage. Sorry, I shouldn't have taken that apart then. I mentioned to you about this fuselage uh, sort of caving in. So when you put a straight edge across it, it would sort of be, be concave. Um, so what I said to do was, was get the kit and sort of come along here and just bend this all up so it's nice and flat on the top. Trouble is with that, when you leave it a day or so, it just goes back on its own. So it goes back to being concave. So what I've done, I've got a piece of plastic card here which I will glue in place, but it's wedged between the floor here and the top. 
but because this floor is only supported there and there it sags in the middle so I've put a couple of bits of plastic card one there one there to support the floor and then what we're able to do is wedge that area up and and keep it up keep it up in the right place um, so that it remains flat and what we don't want to do that I can see that's moved it needs to be glued in place what we don't want to do is go the other way and we don't want to end up making it um, convex so we need it needs to be adjusted just right so it holds it flat and it's not, well, it's not going to hold it up it'll stay there on its own but it will stop it going back to collapsing uh, we may have to do something up here as well we shall see I don't think that moves up there I think it's down here that it moves so um, yeah a bit of a shame um, what I may do here is put something between there and there just a diagonal brace up, up to the join just to stop that sort of collapsing as well but um, all in all it's uh, it's not great. It could have been better designed. It could have had a rib in there or something, but then we probably would have had a sink mark. Um, and you can see now that the oils have dried on that, you can see we've lost all that sheen that it had. And now it's got this sort of accentuated over the top look so that when you look down in there, you see it. Um, if, if it was if it was just painted black, I don't think you would really see anything down in there. So when you look in there now, you can see all that mechanism there, the, the tough bit that we made. You can see all that now. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to go on now and I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to go on and I'm going to get the um, cockpit, sort of get some of those panels in place. You can actually do your washes and your dry brushing and everything after those panels have gone on, should you want to. I'll just move that plate. So um, there we go. But you can actually, it says here in the instructions, um, it says here, the parts can be glued together with PVA or cyanacrylate, super glue. The upgrade parts can also be washed with enamel or acrylic paint. Usable varnish types, ester white spirit, nitro, lacquer and acrylic based, durable UV resistant surface. Maximum bendability tolerance is 5 degrees. So they're very brittle, but they're very resistant to all your different chemicals you want to put on them. So um, that's a good thing. So uh, I'm going to start getting some work done on that. And then I'll come back and um, I'll show you what it looks like when we're there. So moving forward, we've got a bit of work done. Um, this is the Red Fox instrument panel set we looked at earlier and as you can see I've got the side panels fitted in there into the main cockpit tub we've got the bits and pieces fitted on the rear bulkhead as you can see there and then this is the pilot's instrument panel that's the rear instrument panel there because there's many different parts on there and it's really three-dimensional it's not just um you can see it on here as well the the switches they're not just um you know it's not like two-dimensional photo etches actually the actual buttons and switches are raised these this area here where's my pointer this area here i believe should be blank it's got some buttons there i'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave it <clears throat> i'm not after ultimate accuracy then we've got this panel here this is the uh, gun the gun um the ammo guys the gunners cockpit if you like the front cockpit so you've got that piece there and when we've got this one here that goes up in between like so so as you can see that all sort of comes together and looks really nice again you've got that three-dimensional effect on there which is lovely one thing I have noticed if you're building this kit even if you're not using the aftermarket set something that isn't very nice the instrument panel sort of fits into its shroud but as you can see here we've got a, a join there and it's not a very nice join so now I'm going to have to mask and fill and paint and everything um, to get that all nice so yeah probably best assemble that before you do any painting so that would be my advice for my next one um, and then we've also got this is these are the spare parts for the uh, for the powered up and then we've got these little panels in here and we've got you can see there on the joysticks just here you can see there's tiny little pieces of uh, 3d printed material there's little handles on there it's, it's it's absolutely incredible you can see on there the, the joystick just here the tiny little 
bits on there. When it all comes together, you'll see it all in, uh, in better shot. Um, so we've got to get out and get that done. I've got to get like a mat coat on it or something just to dull it down a bit and then we can get a wash in there. The seats, as you know, are dry brushed, as I showed you before. Um, so we've got the seats here. I've glued the, the backs on, mounts, whatever. Um, and those are just going to go into there like that. There are seat belts in the kit. There are photo etch seat belts in the kit, but there's no mention of the instructions and they're horrible. Uh, you've got this here is the little strap coming up through from the bottom and then these things here I'm guessing these are supposed to be the waist straps, but when you look at the seat I don't quite know how they're gonna go. I, and this here There's two of these long straps um, I don't quite know how you're supposed to use those because it's supposed to like come down into a loop uh, so yeah, not very nice at all, but I have actually got this old set here. This is the old photo etch set for the um, For the old Kangnam kit, which is actually the the Academy kit not the brand new tool in the current of the currently available Kangnam kit uh, Academy kit is the Kangnam tool in and you can see in here. We've got all the the belt buckles um, And everything and then when you turn over here, we've got the belts themselves. You could use paper or whatever there's a lot of little greebies in here we could use on this kit, but I'm not going to, but I am going to use those belts, I think, unless I can find something else. But uh, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, yeah, I've got to get on and get this all glued together, get those seams dealt with. And also the other thing is, I would recommend when you look at the edges of these panels, because of the way they're made, you get a kind of, it's great when you look at it like that straight on, but when you, if you look at this one, when you tip it over, you can see you've got like a, a sort of white edge which I'm just going to go around and touch in with a brush just to get rid of that edge. Um, you can see it on that one as well. You can see there's like a, it's almost like a clear edge to it. So I'm just going to get rid of that um, with a little, you know, a little wipe of black paint or something. But uh, yeah, very, very impressive. Really, really nice stuff, this um, Red Fox stuff. Very, very nice indeed. So I'm going to get some more work done and then I'll be back. And there we are, about two hours later, we've made up the belts. Those are from that Edward set I showed you earlier. Let's get some better look here for you. And uh, they're very, very nice, actually. They're, um, they're all brass. It's the older type Edward. So as you can see, it's got this nickel plating on it. I will be doing a video very shortly for newbies all about photo etch and how I do it. And, you know, right from the basics all the way up to soldering and everything. Um, so I will be doing that. <clears throat> if you're wondering why they're an odd colour, it's because I've annealed them. Again, you'll see more of that when I do the video. So let's have a look, basically, how they're going to look when they're in. Um, obviously, it needs to be painted. One of the beauties of having this old nickel silver plated Edward photo etch is you don't need to paint the buckles. The buckles will take on a shiny appearance on their own. Um, so that's the reason for doing that. So that's going to go in there. That's going to go in there like that. And they're just going to lay down in there, something like that. Okay. And then we've got these here, which I've kind of pre-bent. Which one's this? This is a, that's a left hand. So that's going to kind of go in there. And then this one here, I think, is a right hand. So that one's going to kind of go. No, that's not that side. The other hand. <clears throat> there we go. That's going to sort of sit in there like that. And then, of course, we got this little piece in the middle, the little crotch strap, which forms the buckle come here that's gonna sit in there like that something like that so you can see now how it all kind of goes there you go that's kind of how it all goes so you can see there so it's far far nicer than the the ones you get in the kit um, now unfortunately I've looked online and unfortunately, this set is no longer available. 
So I'm quite glad I got these. Um, and also I've noticed for some reason there's two sets in here. So I've got two of each fret. It's very strange. But anyway, um, so uh, those belts made up. That's wonderful. They're looking great. Get them painted up. I'm going to do them like a dark blue grey. Um, I'm looking at pictures. They, they look as though they're mainly sort of black. But this cockpit is just so much black. It's just boring. <laughs> so I'm going to do them like a, a dark blue grey. Maybe even with a hint of a purple in them. Um, that's kind of how they look and they look kind of nylon like so they have like a little bit of a, a sheen to them as well which will look good against the dull grey seats so um, I'm going to get these painted I'll, I'll get them primed first I'm going to try using this stuff here where is it do, 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 do. that's not it that's not it this stuff here this is VMS metal prep you, you brush it on so I'm going to um, I'm going to give that a go and see how that works. But um, with the annealing of the belts, it allows them to. You can see how easy I can just bend that, and it doesn't spring back. You can see it just stays wherever I put it, and that's the whole point of annealing. But I say I'll cover that in another video. So I'm going to get these primed up now with this um, this prep, and then I'll get them painted, and we'll see how they look when we fit them. And there we go, you can see I've painted them like a very dark blue, grey, black, so they're always black actually. Um, and then all you do is go around with a little cocktail stick, sharpen the end into a chisel and take all the paint off all the buckles. So they're not perfect, but the, the paint's going to come off anyway when you start to bend them around. So what we do is we'll go in afterwards with some Viejo paint and just touch them in once they're, once they're fitted. But um, on the whole, we've got the basics there ready to uh, ready to play with once they're actually fitted in place so um i need to check out my references to see what these buckles look like the ones that, that come in the, the crutch strap or crotch strap should i say so um there we go let's get some more work done i'll get these seats glued together i think and uh, perhaps start looking at fitting these belts and there we go all installed and it's often good if you can try to make them look different don't try and make them look the same um, and also remember don't be careful with your anti-gravity one of the most common ones is spitfires and you have the belts coming out like this belts will always flop down i've got the buckles here away from the backrest because they're hanging down and they're supported by that so they're sort of being just pulled away they, they're not sort of leaning back um i mean i suppose i could actually push them back a little bit what I could probably do is just with a blunt instrument like this, just give them a tweak there and they'll stay back. And this is why we anneal because that make, makes, makes the brass soft. So there we go. So they're sat back a bit now, they feel a bit better. But, uh, yeah, I've got this one hanging over the side uh, and then this one straight down the side and then these are coming into the seat. That one's kind of sitting on top of that strap there. It's good to try and make them look different. It's one of the problems with resin seats quite often. You'll buy a pair of resin seats and they're both from the same mold. So you've got identical seat belts and it just, you know, when you've got, especially when the seats are next to each other, like in an A6, it looks terrible. But um, yeah, try and get some variation going, guys. So there we are. So uh, let's see how they're going to look. I'm not sure which is going to be which. I don't think it really matters, but there we go. So you can see now with those belts and with those instruments and stuff, it's really starting to sort of come to life. So that's what we're looking for. So I will now let all this dry and then I'll come back and we'll do something else. I don't know what, but we'll do something else. Okay, next day now, did some work on this last night on the um, on our Hangout on um, Plastic Monkey's channel, our Saturday Night Live at the bench. Did a bit of work and glued these rocket housings together and stuff. But uh, basically um, got the cockpit sort of dummy in place. I've got the instrument panels, the combings aren't glued in, the seats aren't glued in, but the rest of it all is. So I just thought I'd do a quick um, sort of quick look, quick reveal, whatever, so you can see how it all looks. And uh, really, really chuffed. It's going to get a wash and it's going to get dulled down a bit. It's a bit, I think it's a bit shiny on those um, on those instrument panel parts. So I'm going to, I'm going to knock them back a bit and then perhaps go in with a um, or maybe even mask them, mask the screens. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be shiny or matte anyway. A lot of the modern stuff is quite matte, isn't it? It's not glossy. 
Um, but yeah, really, really impressed with how this has come out. It's really, really nice. Lots and lots of detail in there. Um, location of this front instrument panel is imperative because it fits in here in the uh, in the nose. And um, if it's too far forward it, or, or it's on the on the piss, it won't go in properly. It's sort of this fuselage is actually sitting in a step. If I take this peg off, you'll see it's sort of that, that you can see there's a step there. That the fuselage is sitting in so there we go um let's just get that peg back on there uh something i want to investigate we've got a gap here down the side um what i'm finding with this kit in lots of areas particularly this little panel here there's ejector pin marks on the back of it that stop it going in nice and flush it pushes it up on an angle um, and i had the same with the back of this instrument panel here this one, the, the actual pilot's instrument panel, that's got ejector pin marks on the back. So really, really ch check your dry fits and everything because there are ejector pin marks everywhere on this thing and they all interfere with the assembly or they're visible as we talked about before. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd show you that while I'm there. And uh, I think next thing is get a flat coat on there, dull everything down a bit and then perhaps give it a bit of a dry brush and an oil wash and just, I don't know. I've done a little bit of um, scuffing on the floor, nothing too much. I'm not going to weather the hell out of this because it's an E. Uh, the D variant I've got, if and when I build that one, I'd probably really beat that up because it would be a war machine. But um, I'm not actually sure that the E, the later E like this is, has actually ever seen uh, combat. I'm not sure. I'm probably wrong. Probably did some Afga Afghanistan, but probably never any real combat. It's probably more uh, reconnaissance. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll shut up. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I just want to show you something, guys. Uh, if you remember, I was concerned about this gap down here, and you can see now I can easily close it up with just finger pressure. So, um, basically, what's causing that gap, I will show you now. Remember, I was talking about ejector pin marks. There are raised ejector pin marks. On this panel here you can just see where I've sanded them away there and there's some steppage going along here so all I've done is come along with a nice hard 400 grit stick and just basically sanded to get this to go down nice and even and then it just well you see how easy it goes together then it just falls together so uh, that makes life a lot better. There's also an ejector pin mark in there. And that one is actually, I, I thought it was flush um, under surface, but it's actually got a raised edge on it there. So we can take that away. There's one there, that's not going to matter. Not sure if that thing there is doing anything. But, uh, yeah, there's also something there. Look, I'm not sure if that's going to be catching on the instrument panel. It may be. I'll get rid of that. There's all these little bits and pieces. It's worth just going around. I, I, I didn't look at it first of all. We got the same there. We got a raised edge there. A raised edge there. Oh dear! This thing is covered in raised ejector pin marks. It's a nightmare. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I really like the kit, I think it's lovely, but uh, it's just a shame about all the bloody seam lines, which some people call burring. Uh, and um, I'm going to have to paint that again because we've got a grey edge there, look. although I'm going to be gluing it anyway, so I'll paint it after it's been glued in. Um, so you can see you now how it's going to go. Here we go. You can see that's gone in just lovely now. I'm sure there should be a load of detail down there. And I'm sure Edward will come out with a set and they'll give you that detail. It'll be a strip that got on there with all rivet detail in it. It'll look very nice indeed. Um, but I may close the canopy up on this one. Uh, we shall see. Um, so yeah. Right, moving on to the tail something you must do when you look in the instructions let's get that cop out of there and out of the way <clears throat> when you look in the instructions 
when you get to step to step five don't forget to put this bit in because it won't go in after it has to go in now I don't know why they haven't got this as like step five and that's step six so be very very careful also on the live stream last night somebody was telling me this piece of photo etch actually goes behind um, I couldn't fit it in there very well and then I looked at the reference pictures and sure enough it actually goes on the front it's very there's a grill on there and it's flush mounted it doesn't go in behind at all so it does go on the front so I've glued that in place I haven't glued it around here I've only glued it on that tab so it's in place and then we can mess around with it once it's in um, but we also have this shaft which is f37 and they'll have you just put that in okay like that and then it's all it can all just wonk about because there's nothing supporting the back so I've made up a little block there you can see just so I can put that in there and that will hold it sort of square and stop it all wobbling about because there's nothing to stop it all just wobbling about so uh, another daft design so um and what I've done I, 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 I hope it's right I assume it's right I never assumed but I've got it square to this face here so it's square to that face um, in both directions so that's pretty cool um, and that my friends is about that uh, so what I'm going to do now is get on with this cockpit and then we're going to be ready to put this together I need to put this plastic block let's get rid of that tape remember the plastic block I made I can't remember if that was this part or part one that's going to have to go in there to wedge that top up and keep it flat so uh, there we go right let's get this back together and of course the other thing now is we've got that bloody shaft sticking out for the tail rotor oh I can't be bothered but the shaft sticking out for the tail rotor and that's going to be just asking to get broken off so I might have to do something about that I might put something around it and wrap some tape around it or something because that's just going to get snapped off so Onwards and upwards, let's get some more work done on this cockpit and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And there we go, guys. There is the cockpit done. I think what I might do is get some photographs so you can see. I'll get some good light in there because obviously being all blacks and dark greys and everything. But I've given the seats a good matte coat brushed on. This is, uh, if you really want a matte finish, this stuff is amazing. Ultra, ultra matte varnish. You can brush it or spray it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah, as you can see on those seats, it is absolutely dead flat. Uh, the only trouble with it, it's not very hard wearing. So if it's a model you're going to be handling a lot, then, you know, forget it. Or like if it's going to be, you know, this helicopter, say, make sure you put the flat coat on last of all, and then don't handle it. Don't touch it. Don't do it before you put decals on or anything, obviously, because when you handle it, it tends to just, you, you can sort of almost roll it off. It's weird, um, but it's very, very good. It's very, very flat. So what I've done here, um, I obviously masked all the uh, instrument, the um, screens because they were glossy, and then I've given it a, a flat coat, an LP23 matte uh, that dulled everything down, and then it's had a black wash um, with the Modeler's World. I think it's this one, deep black. Yeah, Modeler's World deep black uh, oil wash. You can get that from these guys, Premium Hobbies, and MB10. You get ten percent off. Um, I've given it a, a, a brush over with that and then just gone around with the cotton bud and as you can see on probably on here you can get a kind of let me get some better light here for you you can get a kind of effect like if, if you look at real photographs uh, of the uh, of the helicopter you'll see that the the panels are kind of all blotchy and dusty and dirty and stained and you know they're not all chipped and worn and scratched and everything but they are quite dusty and sun bleached and stuff I guess so it's just giving it that sort of uneven kind of luster to it if you know what I mean so I'm um, quite happy with that this screen I haven't glued it in yet and I'm not going to glue it in it's got the, t the masking tape on it which is making it quite a tight fit but obviously it's going to have some play in it this way and I want to make sure it's going to line up properly with the wind with the uh, the canopy when it goes on so what I'll do is I will actually fit that at the same time as I fit the canopy and we've got those wires to go through as well yet so um, we'll do that at that time 
Um, in fact, probably what we could do is just put that in there loosely, glue the canopy in and glue it to that and then remove the canopy with that on. Then we would be, would be able to put that thread in as they're asking in the instructions. We shall see. It's a bit of a... Because in the instructions you see here, you have your... There's that piece of glazing fitted in between and then here they're showing it as Q29, which is the wrong number, um, as fitted into the uh, canopy. So <laughs> you can't have both. So there we are. Um, so I'm really happy with that. As I say, I'll get some photos and put them up now and you can see it for yourself. So hope you enjoyed those. Um, <clears throat> not the best photo firm photographer in the world, but uh, you get the idea. So if you remember, we talked about a gap down here. As you can see now, I've clamped it up, um, just very gently clamped in place. All I want to do is run some thin cement into this gap. Uh, there is a step there. I've looked at the reference images and it is correct. There is supposed to be a step there. So we can just run some liquid cement down into there. And that will, that will both glue the cockpit into the fuselage, but also it's going to close this gap up. Because if we do have the, <coughs> excuse me, if we do have the, um, the side glazing open, then we're going to see this area. And we don't want a gap there. Either. The step is correct. As I say, there should be some rivet detail and stuff there. But uh, you can see now we've got no gap. And that's all nicely glued up. So we'll leave that to dry for an hour or so. And that will uh, get itself glued in. Um, and then once we take the, the tape off and get the fuselage halves apart, then we can actually go around from the inside. In fact, we can go on the inside from here, can't we? And we can put some cement, make sure we do the right side. Don't want to go gluing the fuselage halves together yet. So we can do that in there. So we can get some cement into there. And then we can... I'm going to use a paintbrush. Let's grab a paintbrush and we'll just get some cement into there. The only reason I'm using a paintbrush, guys, is because it's longer and I can't get in there with the shorter brush. So there we go. So that's nicely and securely glued in there now. In fact, what we'll do with the paintbrush, we'll put some down there as well. And hopefully that'll wick up around that rear bulkhead and everything will be nice and solid. So we can leave that, as I say, we'll leave that for about an hour and then we're done. A lot of people ask, what do I clean the brush with after I've used cement in it? You don't. Basically, um, the, the, the strongest cleaners like airbrush cleaner and everything and this stuff, basically Mr. Tool Cleaner, it, it is basically the same makeup as I mean, Extra Thin. So you don't need to clean the brush with anything because it's, it's not a, a glue, it's a... It's a chemical which is designed to melt plastic. So when you put the joints together, the plastic melds together. It sort of melts and welds at the same time. It's called melding. It melts together and then the, the, the chemicals evaporate and you end up with a glued joint. It's not actually a glue. You can't stick paper with it. You can't stick anything other than plastic with it. So uh, there we go. Right. So we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back and probably won't show you, but I'm going to get in here and do some touch up. I'll get that sill painted again so that's nice and even and we also must remember before we glue the fuselage together to get some black paint in there um, and then we'll put the mesh on and we'll get some black paint sprayed behind the mesh as well so that you don't have any bare brass anywhere being careful not to snap that off so there we go I've also been looking at this um, some may question the fact that I've not got it glued in I've got it rotating because it doesn't tell you here to not cement it it doesn't 
I'm not even sure if they have a oh, they do have a symbol for do not cement when we get to the tail rotor um, where are we here there is no way of actually having the tail rotor spinning there's nothing here that's saying do not cement so it's not a case of gluing that shaft in and then having all this sort of um, rotating around it. It, it. You have to actually glue this, the tail rotor, to that shaft. So if you want your tail rotor to spin, you need that to remain free to turn. So another boo-boo, do not cement. And don't forget, do that before you do that imperative. Right. I'll come back after I've got that bit of black painting done. Okay, just a quick uh, interim here. Um, that's all glued in. I've got this glued in as well, and that plastic lump there is all glued in. I've put a piece in the bottom. I'm going to just go over that with some black paint, roughly. You can't see down in there anyway, really. So um, I'll just do it black, and then that'll be that. Um, it was a waste of time doing all this painting back here, but hey, it's done. Um, <clears throat> just moving forward now to steps 12 and 13, you can see they're asking us to put these doors in. On the uh, on the fuselage to fill these holes and I'm thinking I'm gonna put them in now because that way I can fit the door is that that one there no it's that one there on this side I can fit the door and then come in from behind doop, 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 four dabs or three or four dabs of uh, extra thin and I'll have no glue marks on the outside whatsoever so that's what I'm gonna do there this one here this is where E3 goes which is this one here it's very very tight fit so I've literally come in with a knife and just removed some of the the rim around the around the hole there so uh, that fits in there now and we've got it's nice and loose we could we've got a bit of play we can get it centralized but before it was sort of it was popping itself back out so there we go and here on this one here I want to show you this is part D53 this is going in in step uh, 13 um, we've got photo etch to go in there as well I just want to show you on here I keep talking about this with Tacum and they really, really piss me off when they do this. They've got the sprue connection point, okay? You can see on there, the sprue connection point is on the face, it's not on the edge, which is great, but they've put it on the front face. Why, Tacum? why do you keep doing this on every one of your kits? You have this. Stop it. It is pathetic. Why do you keep doing it? Yes, I'm having a rant. I'm sick of it. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to stop buying Tacom kits, I think, because I mean, I did that big freeze crane, that big crane thing, and it had loads of pulleys and gears on it. And they'd done it on that, and all the pulleys and gears had these little rims around the edge, and you're trying to remove the bloody sprue nib. It could have just gone on the back, the back, they, they glue together, you know. It's like, why do they do this? It's such a pain in the ass. Stop doing it, please. And get somebody decent in to do your instructions as well while you're at it. Right, I'll get this cleaned up. Right, so I fitted those doors. And then I painted in these, you can see these fans here. It's the same in the door. And then there's a piece of photo etch that goes over it. So I painted them black. And then I painted the back of the photo etch black. Glued them in and then painted the front of the photo etch. So I've done that there, there and there. You've got this, this one here goes in but it has no lip for it to sit in. And the reason I painted over that one, you can see there's like an edge around. I'm going to go over that Mr. Mr. Surfacer and blend it in. Um, so we'll get that looking better. And then this one here goes in. They fit beautifully. There's a little ledge for them to sit on. But here, there's it just sort of sits on the edge. There's no real ledge for it to go on. So anyway, I don't really know because there's the mesh is so fine. I think they probably could have got away with just molding that. But then we'd have said, why don't they give us a photo edge? So you can't win, can you, Tackham? Uh, so anyway, um, there we go. But as for my rant with these uh, injector pin marks and the pathetic moulding tabs, you know, sprue gates going onto the front face of things, it's like, come on, guys, come on, get with it. Um, so I also painted the front of that panel there, but like, as I say, you can't really see it when you look in there. You know, if I put my hand over, you can't even really see down in there. It was pointless to be doing all that painting in there, but it's done. It's there. So there we go. Um, so that's that done. So I can go on now, I can go into my instructions in steps 12 and 13. 
and cross out that one, cross out that one, cross out that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So there we go, so they're done. Um, the other thing I've done, I fitted this mesh here to the front of this panel. Again, that goes on the outside. Um, I've had a look at some reference pictures. Uh, Paul the other night was in the uh, live stream and he seemed to think it went on the inside. But uh, no, it does. It goes on the outside. I've had a look at some reference pictures. And I've got a feeling, if you look there, you can see these triangular bits. I've got a feeling that may be held on with like some rubber bands. Maybe just a, a removable mesh. So maybe that's how it's designed. But uh, it certainly does go on the outside. So And it fits very nicely. So I mean, painted all the way inside there black. And we've turned the shaft so we can make sure there's no, in fact, we can take the shaft out. We can see there's no grey areas on there. So uh, so that's that. Don't forget to put that in before you fit the fuselage together. So there we are. Um, so I think now we're ready to sort of get our fuselage together. Oh, the other thing I've done, I've painted inside here. You've got these, you've got these vents here. So obviously you've painted inside those black so you don't look up and see grey plastic. So we can look at now getting it all together. So... That's going to go in like that, that's going to go in like that, and it will just slot together. There we go. It goes together beautifully. And there we are. So I'll get some tape on this, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about fitting these fuselage halves together, because there's quite a lot to talk about. So I'll see you in a second. Right, so I've got the fuselage clamped together. As you can see, I've got it clamped here with the big clamps. That also enables me to stand it up like that without damaging anything. Um, I've got to be careful not to snap this shaft off, so I'm going to put something over there once we've got it all together. But uh, I can stand it up. Now, there's a few things to consider here. One, the front end. I'm not going to glue the front end yet, because when you've got the front end together, you can see you've got this panel going to fit in here. And I want to make sure that panel is going to fit in there nicely so we get the rest of the fuselage glued together and then we'll look at fitting these panels because if I go and glue it together now and then I find that there's a great big gap I might want to sand some material off of here to reduce the width I might find the panel won't go in so therefore I'll put some plastic card in here and shim it out so we'll, we'll do that once we fit that panel um, this area here needs to be nice and flush and level so we're not going to do that yet we can do that afterwards and we can manipulate it this area here needs to be nice and flush and level now I believe this seam here is not filled I believe this is a, a pair of doors and those you can see there there's one there and there's one there I think they're latches I think they're I think those doors hinge open um, here they've cleverly put the seam along the hinge so that's good we've just put some Mr. Servicer in there this here, we've got some rivet detail here, but nothing else to really worry about. So that can, if that's got a bit of a step, it can be sanded out. The leading edge here is going together beautifully. This isn't glued. If you remember when I fitted this piece here, it's not actually glued along the seam. It's only glued up there. Okay, so that way we can manipulate that and get it centered. Obviously, top here is clamped together. We've got a join down the trailing edge. So that's going to be, have to be nicely done, but we can do that afterwards. And then going underneath, here we've got a lot of raised rivet detail. It's beautifully done. It's slide molded. And unfortunately, the slide mold seam is here. It goes around there and goes along there. So they've got the seam right next to a load of rivets. Thanks, Tackham. Well done. So I think the best thing to do is leave it, that seam there. Leave it. Because otherwise, I mean, this bit here we can sand out. We could probably get in and get it deal with a bit there but I would I would suggest probably best to leave that rather than try and sand it out I wish they'd put it halfway along that panel so you could, you could scrape it away at least or whatever but anyway it's there it's there it's, that's it this one runs along that rivet line there but it's very very faint this one is quite a, it's not quite a step it's a few thousand this one here you can barely see it let alone feel it so it's uh, very very good so this seam along the fuselage here on the bottom um, we've got two rows of rivets. There's a row of rivets either side of the seam. So I'm, a, I'm assuming it's two panels coming together and there will be a gap there. So that's good. So all we'll do is we'll get this together as neatly as we can, then miss the surfacer along there. So what I'm going to do is start off up here. Okay, and you can see that I can easily, because I get my finger in there, I can easily manipulate it and end up with it. We don't want it like that. We don't want to get a step in it. Like that we want it to be nice and flat 
so and it's actually sitting on its own it's sitting quite nice and flat so I'm just going to get a drop of the quick setting just brush that in there and that'll just sort of lock that together now this area here is going to be hidden by a bulge that goes on so I'm not going to worry about that I'd rather have a step in there than here so I'm not going to glue this together and then find I've got a step here I'm going to glue this together and if I've got a step in there so what just scrape the ends away get it level and then that panel will go in so we can see we've got a lovely a lovely flat area there so it's nice and level between there and there we've got it nice and level and it's going together very nicely indeed so with that like that I can get some extra thin and just brush it in as long as you just brush it once and then they'll go back it will be absolutely fine and there you can see it's gone together beautifully there we are that seam the join has practically disappeared so we'll just hold that for a while and let that set and then we'll move along and do the same all the way at the back and then we can start looking at the top all right so with that seam done we can now move along um, i'm going to look at this area of the tail here so i'm going to clamp this together and as you can see this isn't really strong enough it's not really pulling it together so what i can do is get a stronger clamp or another peg we'll put a peg on a peg like coming from this side actually and that will double the clamp clamping force so there's a little tip for you guys that are new to the hobby I'm going to put some cement in there we're going to flood it because we don't want it to run out and go onto the um, onto the peg because that will ruin your day okay and then we can get another peg in here and we could even get another peg on there because this area really does have a lot of spring in it so that's that bit held together now I've got the panels off to look at the front and we can see here we've got this panel here now if you remember I said I didn't want to glue this together because it may cause an issue so I'll clamp that together get a peg on it if I can get a peg on it yeah, it's not pulling it right together but you get the idea and you can see that with it pulled right together that panel doesn't go in it's not it just wants to go in with just a small gap so I was right to leave that and what we'll do is we'll put glue that in and then we'll glue the front up because that's actually gluing to the front of the cockpit as well there we've also got to be careful of where this goes okay so what we're going to do is this panel here this is part N2 I think or N3 that's going in there so we're going to put that we're going to butt that up against there because we got a little bit of play there so we'll butt that up against there and we could butt that up there okay and that way that way we know we've got it right because this you can see this panel without this in here I can slide it I can slide it back and end up with a step on the front so it's all a bit of jiggery pokery and just about getting it all right and if you do it all together you can't go wrong so um leave that peg on there like that keep the front together I don't want to go glue anything here because I've got these clamps on here and they're actually pulling this side in so we don't want to be doing that, that yet so now we can turn over and look at the top so this area here you know it, we don't want to step in there because that'll make this panel fit badly so I think the best thing I can do here is get this panel and get that glued in and then we'll work on this seam so we make sure we get that panel fit in nicely rather than having that seam because that seam can easily be filled sanded whatever and as I say up here we've got the hinge and up there I think that's a panel line anyway where the where two doors shut so um I'm going to get this piece off whatever piece that may be and we'll see how that fits slight issue here guys instructions say that part is f1 there's f1 you can see that sprue f f1 is an oxygen hose so I don't think that would fit there very well I'm looking in this bag here which has got the side sponsons in it and 
in here we have two of those panels. So, get both of these out. They're on their own little sprues. And they're known as G1 and H1. And we can see when we look in the drawing that we actually want this one with this lump on. You can see this one, this one has the lump, this one doesn't. So we'll get that one off the sprue. Oh, it actually does say F1. Sorry, it is F1. <laughs> but it's not sprue F. So there we go. So, uh, yeah, I was wrong there. But I was also right, if you know what I mean. Whatever. See you in a minute. All right, so as we can see, I've got that cleaned up now. There is a mould seam. Uh, there are two mould seams, actually. Very, very faint. One along there. Goes up over there and down there. And then one along there. And I've just noticed there is a mould seam there as well. So that's going to have to be sanded out. And we've probably got one here too. So, um, yeah, it's a bit like a car body. This we need to look for the mould seams. Because it's all beautifully slide moulded. So that's where you get your seams from. Uh, it's just unfortunate where they've put some of them. And, uh, excuse me, burping you. Um... And also this panel here is going to have to be clamped so it's going to have, because you can see it kind of on the back end at least it kind of rocks so it's going to have to be clamped there and there and then when it's clamped we'll glue it and leave it to dry. Don't glue it and then clamp it because you get glue oozing out. Um, and then some Mr. Surfacer because we've got quite a quite a little gap down there. But um, it's beautiful the way they've done it because obviously they want this option of having this this or not. Um, and also there's a slot to be cut out by the look of it there. I'm not sure if this one's going to have it cut out or not. We'll look on later in the instructions. I can also see that mould seam carries on in there, look. So we want to get rid of that from in there because that might be giving us some fit issues. So we'll get rid of that one there. And we've also got one there, look. So just get rid of that. That may improve the fit slightly, but uh, maybe we have to look for these things. And here we do have actually a bit of a raised area there. Just removing that, that might help with this going on. No, it still needs clamping. It's like it's sort of a bit sort of, you know, it's like it could do with coming in but the trouble is I don't want to bend it in because it'll make it narrower it looks like it's sort of just opened out slightly in the mold but uh, not an issue at all we're modelers we're not assemblers um, so that's going together like that and that's going to go on beautifully so there we are so what I will do I will get on and get this done because that's not going to cause that fit in any issues at all so we can go on and we can get this seam sorted here and then I think for this video, we'll call it a day. So we can get some end into that gap. Get plenty on there. But not putting plenty around that rivet line because we'll try and restore, well, not restore them, but have them left behind if we can. We've got a panel that goes in here, we've got a piece either side. And what we'll do is we'll fettle them to make them fit if they need it, rather than fettle the fuselage to fit them. So there we are. So that's all together. If you just run our fingernail over the top, make sure we've got no step. Makes it a lot easier for us from when it comes to time to clean up. There we go. Job done. So I'm going to call it a day for this video because, oh no, we've got a bit of time left. Sorry, I'll shut up. All right, moving up here now, just looking at this. What does I'm feeling with my nail, what nails I've got, if there's a step. And I can feel that this side is slightly higher than that side. So I'm just going to push it down a touch. There we go, it's flush. So we can run some cement into there. Notice I'm putting plenty on because I want to make sure it capillaries down into the gap. There we go. And then we can just 
run my finger across there just to make sure there's no, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Just make sure it's all nice and even. And then we'll get a peg on there again, clamp it. We need to do the same here, we need to make sure this disc here, well, let me remove this clamp, this disc here needs to be nice and flush because that's going to have to be sanded and smoothed and we've got rivet detail and all on there so that's absolutely lovely. So I'm going to put some cement in there. Because we want that to be lovely and smooth. And for those of you that want to ask, these clamps are made by a company called Rebel in Sweden. Right, so back here, I've got that area of the fuselage is slightly higher than this side. I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's panels anyway, I'm sure it is. I'm just going to push that down. Run some cement into there, run some down the back of that hinge line. Now I can feel I'm just Pushed it down and what it'll do as it bonds it'll pull the other one level with it. There we go, we've got a nice flat surface now. And then we can just come along and we'll use a paintbrush again. Use a paintbrush again, purely because it's longer. And then just brush some cement into here. That's all that done. Just get some more in there just to make sure we've got a good joint. And then once again just feeling, feeling we've got a nice flush surface there. We can get the end of a rule or something and check that one stayed flat and level. There we go, and then we can leave all that alone to dry, and then we'll go on and get the tail, simple, just standard modelling, we'll go around, we'll glue the tail. Um, you can see I haven't glued this at the front here because one of the things with this, if you pull it in the middle there, it pulls this seam apart, you can see there we've got a gap. If I take that clamp away, you see the gap closes up. So it's one of the things to bear in mind when you when you're doing wing surfaces or whatever. If you clamp in the middle, you actually pull the part the panels apart. So we can get our clamp on there, and while we're here, I think we get some glue into there. And there we go. Get another peg onto there. Here we are. Right, so I am going to call that a day now because we've basically, I've shown you how I got this all leveled up. I've shown you how I got this all leveled up here. There we go, all on the bottom there. None of this is glued, the front's still all loose. So uh, there we are. I shall see you for part three, where I'll have the fuselage all glued together and then we'll move on with something else. And this is where we're going to be completely changing our build sequence because if you look here, they're asking us to put, let's get this out of the way. They're asking us to put lots of little bits and pieces and greeblies on it. All these little pieces like this, they're all going to get easily broken off. So what we'll do is we'll get all the engines done, we'll get this stuff here done. I've got these 3D parts to go on as well, those panels actually sit away from the fuselage. 
So we've got all that to do as well. Um, but we need to be very, very careful about putting little bits and pieces on because you're going to be picking it up and breaking them off bits like this here. Um, little pieces like that there, you know, it's all just going to be so easy to break off. And we'll also get these, this D11 and D12, we'll get them in as well before we, um, before we move forward as well. So there we are. Um, you know, bits like this big piece here can go on the back. We can go on and get the, the um, forward-looking stuff on the front. Um, rotor head can go last. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be really messing around with the build sequence, which I know some of you hate, but I know some of you love to see me do because it gives you ideas on how to go forward with your kits. So um, there we go. I will see you for part three. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, as I say, it's, it's not like a full build video. It's sort of more... A look at how I'm getting on but um really pleased with how that cockpit's come out we'll have to get something on there to cover that up but um really pleased with how that's come out so uh right I will see you all soon for part three and we'll move forward from there bye for now